have an idea in your mind of something you want, and you deserve to get it. So how do you get there? Well, welcome to The Idea Space, a podcast devoted to helping you overcome frustration and make what you want a reality. I'm your host, Jen Liddy, high school teacher turned entrepreneur. Now I'm a business development coach. It's my mission to help women bring their ideas to life and get what they want without feeling guilty, selfish, overwhelmed, or lost. Every week, I share topics, tools, and strategies to help you move toward that thing you want, create time and energy to do the things you love, get clarity on what you really want and how to get there, and most importantly, stop feeling alone with your challenges. Whether you've wanted to create a better business, job, relationship, hobby, or self, I know there's something more that you want, and it's time you were able to get it with confidence and clarity. Ready to have it? Let's go. Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining me today. I love to interview past clients who have had huge successes. And today I'm going to introduce you to Christine Kraling, who is a client who has has done exactly that. She designed her life on purpose. And today I want her to tell you her story of how she made her life and her dream come true. And it really took some very specific planning to make it happen. And so Christine Kraling, thank you so much for being here. Thanks for having me, Jen. Christine is a podcaster and she launched her podcast, Bloom Where You Were Planted, very purposefully. You were very intentional about making this dream of yours a reality. So today I want to talk about uh, a couple of things and I'm going to get you going, but first, can you tell us a little bit about who you are, what you do, what your podcast is about? Sure. I mean, like you said, I'm a podcast host. It's called Bloom Where You Are Planted. And the mission is twofold. I talk to people who have faced challenging times and come out strong on the other side. So there's lots of inspiring stories from different types of people. And I also talk to experts from time to time who can help us be the best versions of ourselves when life gets in the way. That I was a freelance writer and public relations consultant. Why did you want to do this podcast? Why was it so important to you? Well, you know, when I was doing some freelance writing, I was always inspired by the people I would talk to. And I wanted to just share more. I also wanted a new project that was just for me. I was writing for other people. Uh, Some of the time I wasn't even getting paid for that writing, but I wanted to do it because it was a passion of mine. And I got to the point where I felt, you know, if I was writing for free, I might as well do something for myself. Yeah. So I took my writing and research and interviewing background and turned it into the podcast. Well, I want to talk about how you made it real because for a long time it was an idea. And I know that mm-hmm. you are a classic overgiver, which a lot of my clients are. They come to me and they are always looking for how to give to somebody else, how to make somebody else's dreams come true, how to take care of somebody else's needs. So when you came to me, which was about a year ago this time, yes. 2018, the fall of 2018, you had a very clear purpose in mind. Can you talk a little bit about that? Sure. Yeah, I had I'd come to you September of 2018. That's right. And just to backstory a little bit, the year prior to that, I had gone to therapy with the express intent, at least my intent was to treat it as more of a life coaching or mm-hmm. a business kind of coaching session. And as I think anybody who's been to therapy knows, it doesn't end up that way. <laughs> I was trying to take some steps and work on some goals and and we started falling back into those therapy patterns of why you do the things you do and all kinds of stuff that you know you could spend your life talking about but I knew I was moving more toward the point of I wanted to put things into action and not to myself just whine and complain about why I wasn't meeting my goals so I stopped the therapy and found you <laughs> <laughs> you you use that word a lot. You you talked about how you used to whine and complain, whine and complain. Those are your words. They are. And when I, when I met you last year, we did a deep dive session, which is an hour and a half, where we really go deep and we figure out what you wanted. When we got to the end of that session, what were your like ahas? The ahas were it was easier than I thought to stop the whining and complaining and start doing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, I mean, and I think working with you helped because you knew. When I came in, that's what I wanted to do. And we had talked about the difference between therapy and coaching. And and I knew I was in that place where I needed to start moving forward. So that helped tremendously. When you came to me that September, you knew what you wanted, but there were a lot of obstacles in the way. And I really want you to share your obstacles because I think your obstacles are classic 
mom overgiver obstacles? What was in your way? What could have gotten in your way? Let me let me rephrase that. What could have gotten in your yeah. way? Yeah, well, it, in all fairness to the people that I live with and love, I'm going to call the obstacles challenges. <laughs> That's really nice uh, of you. Yeah, that? <laughs> there's, there's that overgiver part again. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so when I came to you, I knew that we were going to be moving probably within the next nine months to a year, moving out of state. My daughter had been engaged. My older daughter had been engaged from the previous December, so we were in the throes of wedding planning. I also knew that my younger one was going to be going to college the following September. Mm -hmm. And as a result of the out-of-state move, I knew my husband would be traveling um, once we had settled in. So I saw where everybody's place was, and I was starting to get concerned about where mine was going to be. And I didn't want to have that year go by after we moved in and getting everything settled and watching everybody do their thing. And then I'd be sitting here and started. Can you say that one more time? Because the, the, yeah. the recording just, you, yeah. you, you saw where everybody was. Right. I saw where everybody was in my head or where they were all going to land. And I started to think about where I was going to be. And I didn't want it to be September of 2019 and me sitting here without a plan and having to start now. So I started last year. And it's interesting because I just listened to a podcast this morning where Marie Forleo was the guest and she said, you have to start before you're ready. And I think that's really important. You could have had so many good reasons why not to start. When you, and you really weren't ready. You really grappled with right. this. You were like, who am I to like spend money on coaching? I, I don't even have a thing yet. And, and I, my daughters both need my attention. My house is going to go on the market. Like There were so many good reasons. But my favorite thing about you was you were able to put away the whining and complaining, and I'm putting air quotes around that, right, right. Um, to really say, I'm looking at future Christine, and I'm worried for her. And I don't want her to feel unfulfilled. And right. you did the work. I did. Yeah. So can we talk a little bit about what you actually learned and implemented for yourself? Oh, sure. I mean, I learned a lot. I did that deep dive with you for the 90 minutes was really uh, very valuable. Um, we got through a lot in just a short period of time. Um, I think I started like the old school way. After that, I went to the library just every week sat in the quiet with my laptop and the research and like the podcasting for dummies book that was so outdated by that point. But I was like, you know what, I'm just going to find whatever I can mm -hmm. out of here and, and just kind of took little baby steps mm -hmm. week after week and crossed things off the list and, you know, just started working toward what the bigger goal was. Because for so long, I, I looked at the big goal and said, you know, it's just not attainable. And I think a lot of women people do that. They look at the big thing and they say, I'm never going to get from A to Z, but you don't realize that just A to B, B leads to C and C to D and on, on, on. You know, you take the first step. I think you told me this. You take the first step, the other steps just follow. They mm -hmm. just do. I mean, some days it looks like they're not following at all, but if you hang in there, they, they do follow if you put the work in, but you have to yeah. put the work in. And you have to put the work in, which is what you did. The other thing is, how did you carve out time? Because honestly, a daughter who's getting married, out of state, right? <laughs> a move out of state and a right. daughter who's in her senior year of high school, like those three things alone, they really, they're kind of like a, a, a fish, a goldfish. They could take up as much space as you'll give it. So what exactly. were your strategies that you put into place to make sure you were able to take step A, then B, then C, then D? Well, I did the mastermind session that you had offered that okay. fall also, which was helpful. It was helpful to be around other women right. who were already succeeding because I, I, maybe you read, I used to think the mastermind session would be great for you. And I said to you, well, I'll do it, but you have to promise me that all these women don't already have all their stuff together, you know, because I would feel so insecure and whatnot. And you said, well, they are already business owners, but they're all at different places in their business. So that made me feel a lot less intimidated mm -hmm. to go into that. So I found being in that environment very inspiring. And that went fall through a little bit of January. So there were some days when it was, you know, harder to get out of the house than others for weather reasons, but I was motivated. So mm -hmm. I had that motivation and the support of those women in that group. I don't know. What was the question? <laughs> you I wanted to know, like, beyond yeah. having... So beyond having a group of people to collaborate right. with. And yeah. then the external motivation of having a coach, what did right. you do for yourself? Like, did you have to carve out yeah. every Friday morning? Okay, or, right. Like, yeah. What else yeah. did you do? I, mean, I did carve out certain times based on what the week looked like. I would try to plot out certain days and times of every week and try to stick to that. Uh, so the library stuff, I tried to do that like every Monday just to get out of the house, no matter what the weather was, and just go sit in the quiet and do stuff. Yeah, carving out the time is really important. 
keeping up with the yoga practice is also important because I find that when my mind is still, other things have a chance to break through. So that was always helpful on a weekly basis, you know, to just keep my head together where it needed to be. And also setting boundaries, which was really hard. And you and I talked about that. And it's, it's tough to tell your family when they're going through certain things and they need you like, hey, I'm just not going to be available at these times. And what was funny to me was you had said, you know, you don't sit down with all of them and make this big announcement like, <laughs> okay, people, this is the way it's going to be now. Monday, Wednesday, Friday from 10 to 2, I can't talk to you. You don't do that. You just start implementing it. You start changing your reactions to the constant text messages that come through during the day and the phone calls right. and such. And you just react differently and you see that everybody else starts to support and respect. And, and it's not to say my family was not supportive. They were, they are, they always have been. But I think when you've got someone who's always been there for people starting to take steps for themselves, it, it's a learning curve and an adjustment for everybody. It's 100%. not big, it's not huge, but it, but it is a little bit of a thing. So what you just said, I think is vital because a lot of women have set it up in their, either at their workplaces or in their family lives that I'm always available to you. And when you shift the paradigm to be available to yourself, the big worry is, will they feel disappointed in me? Will they feel like I've de, um, you know, abandoned them? Right. And so I'm curious, did you guys have any big conversations or blowups? Did, did everybody survive? Like, <laughs> well, what happened yeah. when you put everybody, these little things in place? Everybody survived. And it's funny that you say big blowups. There were never really any big blowups. But after we did that, um, it was the September is the new January workshop, I think, which was way before I started with you with the mastermind. It was that January workshop we had mm -hmm. done. And the kids had just gotten engaged the month before. So they had come up and we had started plotting out the guest list and whatnot. And it was funny. We were all sitting at the dining room table, each of us with a laptop except for the bride, which I thought was hilarious. <laughs> I had mine out. Her fiance had his out. My younger one who was maid of honor. All there was like meeting in the minds and she was sitting there just giving us direction. I'm like, what's wrong with this picture? <laughs> so... In that um, workshop, you had us plot out quadrants, and like quadrant one was everything is an emergency. It was nine one one. Your hair's on fire all the time. Right. And I sat there with them, and I said, "Listen, here's what I'm going to tell you. I am not living in quadrant one for the next <laughs> eight months." And so it became a joke throughout the wedding planning process. Like, all right, we're in quadrant one here. We got to get out. You know that kind of thing. That's awesome. No, that was like the really only come to Jesus meeting, as Brene Brown would say, that we really, I mean, it was kind of like I said, I started making this and everybody kind of fell into line. Like even now, if I'm recording, I text them all, not available from two to three, you know, that kind of thing. So yeah, everybody's good. Everybody survived. They still love me. I still love them. <laughs> right. <laughs> they still it, love me. It's yeah. a scary yeah. lesson though. It's a scary yeah. cliff to jump off of. It Especially is. for women who have like who have the pattern and it's been going on for years and they they, they don't know what's on the other side when they take right. the leap. But right. I know for them, people will survive and they'll actually be better for it. Like they'll be stronger, yeah. they'll be more independent. Right. And then you get to put the oxygen mask on and have something for yourself. Right. Exactly. Exactly. So the real the other reason I really wanted you to have to have you on today was um the, I'm talking about this month how planning creates freedom for us. And many creative women don't believe that. They like to kind of go by the seat of their pants and be spontaneous. But what they find is that if you don't plan and you're just always spontaneous, kind of you're just always running around like a chicken with your head cut off, kind of, or you're playing whack-a-mole, like do this, do this, do this, do this. Right. And I know that you're right. by nature a planner, but you're also a creative woman. And I wanted you to chime in. What are your thoughts on my assessment that freedom comes from planning, which is kind of antithetical, especially to a highly creative woman? Yeah, no, I mean, I absolutely agree. There's that expression, if you fail to plan, you plan to fail. And I, and I don't know that that's necessarily the case all the time. That sounds a little harsh, but you know, I, and then, I don't know. I just think that some people are wired differently and yes. I'm wired as a planner. Mm -hmm. And you know, the whole fly by the seat of your pants thing. No, that's not, I mean, I, I do like some spontaneity. I think you and I've talked about, you know, finding more time to play that mm -hmm. kind of thing. Yes. For some people that just comes easier than others. Planning just comes easily. It's who I am. I still keep a real to-do list. I have a digital calendar, but I have a paper calendar. I like to plan. Mm -hmm. I mean, but I also like to leave white space knowing in reality, things are going to come up. You're going to need to have to, you know, juggle some stuff around and make some adjustments. But I feel better when I'm planning. <laughs> so what I, what I just heard you say is two things. 
you said you have to find time to play, yeah. which, which is planning. Like play doesn't yeah. just happen spontaneously. And if play happens spontaneously all the time, then we're generally not terribly efficient or productive. And then right. the second thing you said was, I like to leave white space for things that come up. And again, right. that's a way of planning for flexibility. Like it's a right. way of planning for, oh, oh, look, I have an open spot in my calendar. I can go for a walk or I can meet right. my friend for coffee. That's right. the play that I want to do. So right. every time you plan for play or spontaneity, you are actually more productive. And I know that most women are, they want, like most women want to be more productive, even the ones who are mm -hmm. super creative. The, like what they tell me, like I have a few people in my mind right now, like the women who are so creative and they resist planning so much. Yeah. But the other thing that they really want is like, they want to get more done and they want more free time. Right. I mean, that's the ideal to have the structure, but yet the freedom for the spontaneity. And I, and I know that more, there are way more creative people than me. Like I, when you say creative, I think photographers, artists, you know, graphic designers, that kind of thing. And it's funny because when I was an editor, you know, part of being a good editor is working with your art department and you see very quickly how each mind works very different. Yes. Just in you know, that left brain, right brain kind of thing. I'd love to be one of those people that is way more spontaneous and maybe one day I will be, I don't know. But you know, for me, I'm as spontaneous as I can be. And yeah, I've stopped judging myself yeah. for um, not being so spontaneous. It's, it's just something that it's like not the right. way that my brain works. So given that you're right. highly structured and that it really has served you and that you've learned how to look to your future self. Mm -hmm. Do you have any advice for people, like some strategies that you, like people are always looking for strategies or tactics to help them be more productive? Well, I think you have to find what works for you. I think you first have to get real with who you are. Like I'm saying, if, if you're always this planner person, all of a sudden throwing, ripping up the calendar and saying, ah, whatever happens, happens, that's not going to work for you. You know what I mean? You have to recognize what your strengths and your weaknesses are and just kind of work with that, you know? I think you have to know yourself. You have to know yourself first and foremost and just go from there. And maybe just try a little bit here and there, do something a little bit different. Like maybe if you can leave not a whole day's worth of, of white space, but maybe just a morning and say, you know what, Thursday morning, if it's nice out, I'll just see where the day takes me. I'll go take a walk or maybe I'll go to a movie. And buy myself. Whatever works for you to make you feel recharge so that you can reset and what works for me may not work for you and that may not work for your best friend or whatever like you're saying don't be so hard on yourself who really cares no one cares at the end of the week if I ran around like a chicken with my head cut off or went to a matinee five days a week no one cares as, as long as you're doing what you need to do for yourself and and your family without you know leaving a house full of children home alone unattended or anything <laughs> right. with a bowl of chicken right. nuggets <laughs> right yeah yeah I mean chicken nuggets are fine every once in a while but you don't want to fall into this pattern where it's just everybody's like like I said in quadrant one it's nine one one yes yes so I, I don't think an extreme in either direction works for anybody you know I love that you said that because we're talking about the extreme like a lot of the clients that I meet w when they start are in the extreme of like everything feels like a 911 situation right, so we kind right. of move more toward the middle but then there are other people who are so and I think I've struggled with this too they, that I was so sh uh, regimented and that there was no room for any spontaneity and so I guess I really wanted to have this conversation right. to say Christine is highly regimented and she's really good at planning ahead, but you've also, you made space for yourself. And that's the thing I'm so proud of you for, because honestly, like it could be September, 2019 and you could be saying, okay, it's my time. Let's start looking at the podcast, but you've got the podcast under your belt already right. up and running. Right. Right. So now it's just a matter of enhancing it and, and putting more systems in place to get it to a place where I needed to be. Not the podcast itself, but trying to get ahead of scheduling interviews and not scheduling, you know, interviewing yeah. someone and then the interview is, is aired two weeks later. Like, I don't, I don't like that. The freedom so, is in yeah. the planning because right. you're like, I know that if I know that I, if I do this now, I have freedom later. Exactly. And sometimes it's hard to see that, you know, the, the light at the end of the tunnel and you just, you feel like you're on the hamster wheel. But if you kind of just play right now, try to really make these for repetitive, you know, interviews one after the other, after the other, and just batch them, then I'll feel like I'm ahead of the game, you know? Yes. A hundred percent. So, so yeah. I'm hearing that the advice you would give for somebody who's either highly regimented or highly creative is to like 
create space for yourself. Look to your future self. What is it that you want it to look like? And then you said the advice from Marie Forleo is start before you're ready. Exactly. And that's very scary, you know, because I think you come into these things very insecure and not knowing, as you know, I knew nothing about recording a podcast. Yes. I'm mean, somewhat technologically inclined, but not really. Yes. So that's very intimidating. So whether you want to start a business and, you know, I've heard a lot of women say, you know, I had no experience in this area, but I had a passion for it. Yeah. I mean, yeah, you've got to know stuff, but I think the passion goes a long way too. So now you that know? you have done the hard things of like planning is not so hard for you. But putting yourself first was hard for you. Putting boundaries in place was harder for you. Mm -hmm. And now that mm -hmm. you are somebody who has seen your future self and planned for her, and now here she is, what does it feel like to be in this place now? It feels really good. You know, it does. But I think that there's still always that voice in the back of your head, like, so what are you going to do next? So oh, what are you yes. So you, you kind of have to tamp that down a bit too and, and yes. remind yourself, well, this is where you wanted to be a year ago. And look, here's where you are. So just kind of sit with it and enjoy it a little bit. And, you know, I find it's helpful to kind of keep a, a file of sorts of accomplishments so that every once in a while, when you feel like you're getting nowhere and doing nothing, making no tracks, you can say, well, hey, I was interviewed on Jen's podcast this week. And I was interviewed by this guy last week. And I'm in, you know, this this week. And just just to give yourself a few pats on the back, kind of be your own, yes. own cheerleader. One of one of the tools that I find most because helpful. You know this whole entrepreneur thing. It's very isolating. Yes, you know, it's, very it's isolating. so hard to see your own growth because, and we're always like, you know, we're always pushing and pushing and pushing, like you said, which can mm -hmm. be really defeating, and it's hard to see growth. And so, I find a really helpful question is to say, where was I a year ago with this? Right. And sometimes right. when I'm in a session with a client. I'll say, you know, a year ago, you would have handled this like this, but look what you right. do now. And they often forget. It's kind of like childbirth. Like we forget how yeah. hard it was. I think that's why people oh, yeah. get tricked into having more than one child because we yeah, forget, perhaps, right? Perhaps. And oh, yeah. Or moving. How about right, that? Right, right. And <laughs> yeah. so if I said to you, where were you a year ago? You were like, oh my God, I was really terrified yeah. and I didn't even know how to have space for myself. And if I, if you kind of look back a year, six months, three months ago, uh, it's a really easy way to say, oh, Oh, wow, I have made yeah. progress and right. in all areas of our lives. And so it's interesting to look forward and plan for ourselves, but it's also really helpful to come sometimes look back and see how far we've come. Yeah. I think you exactly. did a great job with that. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. So tell Thank people how they can help. find your podcast. Oh, sure. Well, it's on all the usual podcast platforms, iTunes, Spotify, Stitcher, that kind of thing. Uh, you could also go to my website, which is christinecrailing.com, and there's a tab up there for it. I'm also on Facebook, uh, LinkedIn, Twitter. I'm all over the place now. <laughs> so how does it feel? Um, how would you describe being a podcaster now? Are you, does it make you feel excited? Does it make you feel you know, like legit, how does it feel to be a podcaster? <laughs> yeah, I, I feel a little more legit now than before that mm -hmm. I've got title, you know, I guess, but um, it, it's great because I get to talk to a lot of different people and, mm -hmm. and hear their stories and, and find out how they've come through. And that's always inspiring too. And, and even on your worst day, you can say, wow, you know, everything's relative. So that's nice. You know, it, it's just nice to share people's stories with the world too. And if you help just one person, I'm great. Just to have a creative outlet for myself too. You know, yes. when people say, what do you do? And they have a response. Yes. Yes. <laughs> so, yeah. But I mean, it, it, it's great. It's, it's letting me be more of who I am. And at the same time, letting me work through some things that are not comfortable for me. I mean, you know, we went through this whole thing where I hate the sound of my own voice mm -hmm. and how am I going to be a podcast host if I can't stand listening to myself, right. you know, that right. kind of thing. And I said, you know what, I'm just going to do it and see what happens. Yeah. And you, you know. did. I'm so proud of you. And thank you so much for being a success story for me because you're exactly the, where you came from, like so many women come from there, but then they, they stay in their story that, no, 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 I have to be available to everyone. And I want, I want people to see that you can be available to everyone. You can. And with a little planning, you can also have the thing you want for yourself. And it doesn't exactly. have to suck up your life. Exactly. Yes, yeah. I love it. Thank you so much, Christine. I really appreciate thank it. You. Thank you, Jen. I really enjoyed talking to you today. Thanks for joining me today. You can access more free tools and video trainings at www.jenliddy.com slash free sources. That's F-R-E-E -E sources. If you found this podcast helpful, I'd be so grateful if you subscribed and gave a review. And if you have a friend who'd benefit from today's topic, tool, or strategy, 
please share the Idea Space podcast with her. That way, together, we can help more women achieve their dreams and take action on their ideas. Isn't it time we all were able to get what we want? Join me next week, and remember, right now, all you need to do to make your idea a reality is take the very next step you know how to. Bye.